Uh, we're from Spring Hill Elementary School, and we do roller coaster for Division B, and we won first place in the regional and the state. So we're gonna show you how the roller coaster runs, how we built it, the challenges that we had to face to build this roller coaster. Okay, perfect. So the target time at the states was 32 seconds. Okay. So what are you doing? Explain also what you're trying to do at this so point. We're gonna first balance this thing. We, we, uh, our roller coaster, we need to balance our roller coaster first. That's the first step that we always do. Slight imbalance can cause the slopes to go wonky. Okay. And we're adding ones here because if we lift this guy right here a little bit, it will turn into the middle. So show me what you guys are putting under, underneath the roller coaster here. These are, little, well, these are basically just cut up popsicle stick pieces. Cut up popsicle sticks so that you can balance the table. Okay. And we just label them one, two, three based on their height. So this looks in the middle to me. How about to you? Good? Yep. And then we have vertical balancing too, which we created, which we made. Yeah, that's also pretty much in the center. So now we're just going to see how it runs. You have to use gate run, gate one, glue and screw. Excellent, well done. Can you do it one more time so I, we can see the jump? One more. Uh, can we time it? Uh, we can actually time it. Hold on, let's see. All right. Say three, two. Okay. So run the whole thing, just like the way. Okay, perfect. All right. Three, so. three two, one, go. Thirty seconds, perfect. Okay, so why don't you guys talk about how you uh, built this, so Brian? <clears throat> so basically, we had to come up with mechanisms to change the time based on what they give us at the actual event. So um, first, we had to be able to change the slopes, uh, one and two. So for the first one, we can uh, actually remove these and like place them in different positions so that um, it. Uh, lowers or uh, or like makes the incline higher. So. Like this. Uh, and then for the bottom slope, we can simply rotate this piece of wood. So this is what we call block mode because it's just a block of wood. And now it's screw mode because there's screws that hold it up. Uh, we have these jumps right here, two big jumps, uh, and we decided based on the rule book we can actually have a loop. So first thing we wanted to get the time correct. So we planned on making these two slopes and about seven centimeters per. So you get fourteen centimeters. We we plan to use all sixty centimeters of height or somewhere near that, like fifty eight or fifty nine. So we have. 46 centimeters in the middle to play with. Uh, and then now we have to do efficiency of gap versus loop. And that was the biggest test for us. So we used a plastic track to do the loop and we used wood to make sure that the drop would be straight. And this, we found that uh, if we had 33 centimeters of height, we could get 11 centimeters of loop height. 
uh, and that's pretty much the best ratio you can get. But you also get 11 centimeters back. Once you do the loop, you can go up 11 more centimeters, about, like very near that amount. So in, uh, you have 22 centimeters, 66 points. So you get three points per centimeter of height that you lost. For gaps, we were able to figure out that with 30 centimeters, including all of this height from here, we would be able to get uh, 23 centimeters at a good angle. But you can get centimeters back, uh, seven centimeters back from adding, making it go up after the jump. So seven centimeters back, and uh, you waste 30, um, 30 uh, centimeters of height. So 23 centimeters of height, 23 times four points. So it's a four to one ratio in terms of points. So we decided that gaps are just better. Perfect. Anything else? Do you guys uh, yeah, want to talk about some struggle. of the challenges that you guys ran into? So our first struggle, actually our story, we first had the invitation and we built it out of foam and that was a huge disaster. It, we had like 45 seconds to make and that did not work for us. We tried, we barely got to 30 seconds and it didn't work. So now we decided to do a different strategy maybe to get the time. So we've seen in different very sources that there's this half, half pipe where you can go up, down, like that. Back and forth. Back and forth, pretty much. It's like this circle, it's kind of this curve, and it just goes back and forth. But is it consistent? That was the main question. One time we got like 23 seconds, another time we got 40 seconds. Like 17 seconds of variation, how are we gonna nail the target time? And that is where we did the slope right here. That is pretty much the best way you can get consistent times. You can get, as long as the balancing is the same as before, you're going to get the same times within a second. Can you run a 60 second real quick? A 60 second. Yeah. So we have to go pretty much all <coughs> our slowest So time. your variation is 30 to 60. Can you do a 60? Yeah, let's go to blue. So you're going on the least slope, I'm assuming, right? Yes. Okay. And the least slope on the bottom. So the least possible slope so on the bottom as and well. And you have the so. so that, uh, oh yeah, your one came out. Okay. You have to do the least possible on okay. the slopes. Okay. So, yeah, no gaps. So these are little gates that you guys have built. Yeah, that so allow like you we to... can make a shortcut. So like, normally the ball would roll through the other way okay. until it goes through the gap. But okay. we can make it go through this lane and it's like a shortcut. Okay. Yes. Okay. This shortcut where okay. you go to the same point. Okay. Another struggle we had that I just wanted to share, we put the gates at the top, which was the biggest fundamental error we made with this current roller coaster design. Uh, what saved us was actually this tube right here, which was 3D printed. But the gates at the bottom would probably have been a better strategy because the balls go at different variations uh, into the gap. So without this part, it sometimes would go here and work fine, or sometimes like twist and go in different directions because the hole was too big for the ball. Uh, so we 3D printed this tube right here, which would make the ball, which is roughly the diameter of the ball, so that the ball could only have one way to go down. Okay, so let's run this. Yeah, let's run uh, 60 seconds. Okay. Okay. All right, let's see. All right, so let's see, zero oh, marker. All right. Closed. Let's run. Three, two, one, go.
58.52. Fantastic. Anything else you guys want to say? Um, so another problem we faced was, uh, so basically, uh, so when it was coming from here, uh, it would kind of stop sometimes. So we just added a bit of um, popsicle, a popsicle stick we taped in, so it would always, uh, it would never get stuck. Okay. Yeah, so that it would go into the hole at this point. We realized that if the hole, if it would go into this hole from the front, then it would fail. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't make it all the way, just go up and then back down. Okay. And so yeah. basically, from adding the piece of um, popsicle stick. It ensured that the ball entered the second gap entrance in the middle of the hole. We cut here. Yeah. Perfect. The Sounds biggest, so the biggest materials we kind of used is wood, nail guns, and just to connect everything. We built the frame, all of that. But the biggest learning lesson from this is to always spend some time thinking on design first before just jumping into things. That's how we figured out that two gaps was definitely the best strategy. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Excellent. Well done, guys. All right. Say bye. Bye. Bye.